All right, guys, it is freezing right now. It's about to snow. We're, we're about to get our first snow of the year. It's like 25 degrees. But uh, we got a huge week seven. We've got the major uh, upset with Tennessee and Alabama. I'm going to talk about all of it. I'm going to talk about every ranked game. I'm going to rapid fire this go really quickly, starting with the noon games and the big noon game, Michigan trouncing Penn State. Penn State is actually lucky. The final score was 41-17 to because they had a fluke tipped pick six in the first half. They were thoroughly dominated in that first half, yet they were only down 16-14. to I was so disappointed in James Franklin coming off a of bye week. It's a disgusting performance. Clemson, or excuse me, Penn State looks slow on defense. Michigan thoroughly dominating them. It's a good win for Michigan. Of course, I maintain the opinion I've always had about Michigan. They're good, but they're not good enough, in my opinion, to beat Ohio State in Columbus. That's just my opinion. We'll see if I'm right or wrong. Uh, but Michigan, really good win. I think Michigan will probably be ranked fourth. If I had to guess, I think they jump Clemson after this. Although Clemson, Clemson's looking very good right now. We will get to them. But again, Michigan, huge win. Penn State, major step back. Not all is lost. Start the, you know, I would start the true freshman five-star quarterback. Personally, you've got the whiteout game versus a very beatable Minnesota team coming up. We will see what they do. They, this is their first loss. They're still going to be inside the top 25, but it's a disgusting, especially defensive performance. They could not stop Michigan running the football, and again, it probably should have even, even been worse than 41-17. to Next, we've got Ole Miss, kind of in a weird shootout game, versus Auburn, 48-34. to It was the rushing in this game that was really good, and guys, I say it every week. I think Ole Miss is a bit of a fraud. Um, once they face someone of value that's really good, they will lose. That's just my opinion. They do get the win. It was like a 14-point spread. They won by 14. And it was a weird game. There was some sort of lightning de delay, even though it was sunny. I was trying to figure that, like, why is there a lightning delay? It's like sunny, but... Either way, Old Miss does get the win. Not surprised. Again, they're 14-point favorites. You're facing an Auburn team that's a dumpster fire. That's got a lame duck head coach. Nobody's surprised by that result. You've got Oklahoma over Kansas, 52 to 42. Guys, when it seems too obvious, it always is. Everybody was saying, "Why is Kansas seven-point underdogs?" Well, this is why. Their defense, you know, we have to remember when it comes to Kansas, they've got one of the worst rosters in terms of talent in the Big 12. That's nothing against their team. They played hard with their backup quarterback. They scored 42 points, but they allowed 700 yards of total offense. Obviously, that's not good enough. Oklahoma getting Dylan Gabriel back, major boost. Marvin Mims just completely outmatched them. Oklahoma like 25 more four stars, probably even more than that, than Kansas in this football game. Just way more talent for Oklahoma, even though Oklahoma's been struggling this year. Their roster is so much better. They're at home. They get this win by 10 points in an absolute shootout, 52-42. to 42. But Oklahoma controlled this entire game. It was a 10-point win, but it was a game where Oklahoma was constantly up by a touchdown, by two touchdowns. They were always winning. Next, we've got kind of a weird one. Texas beating Iowa State 24-21. to So Iowa State does cover the 16. We saw that spread really shoot up. A lot of people buying the Quinn Ewers hype, buying the Texas hype. Uh, and that was a really good performance by Iowa State on the road. Their quarterback, I believe over 300 passing yards. They had a receiver that had like 12 catches, but they do lose by three points. Um, you know, I think Texas was a little bit slowed overall. Still not a horrible performance on offense, but Texas does get the win. A little bit disappointing for many people, though, with Texas being 16-point favorites. Iowa State, very good defense. I know they've lost four games in a row. It's a very tough conference, a very competitive conference. They do have a good defense. Next, we've got, Milan, we've got Illinois crushing Minnesota. 26 to 14. How about Chase Brown? I believe he had, what did he have, 41 carries? Crazy stuff. Tanner Morgan, the overall story in this one, just horrible. 
gets injured, unfortunately, and it looks like Minnesota's se um, season is completely spiraling out of control. They've got a, a, probably a backup quarterback starting next week in the whiteout at a Penn State team who's going to be pissed. Their season, I would say at this point, their chances of winning the West, very, very slim. Tanner Morgan injury, things like that. Uh, and this was a game that Minnesota was favored in. They, 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 they opened as four-point favorites. It went to minus six. Illinois needs to be taken seriously at this point as a legitimate threat in the West uh, because that's a great win, another really good defensive performance, and the QB played well enough throwing the ball over 200 yards, I believe the transfer from Syracuse. Uh, next, we to the 330 window, we have... Georgia shutting out Vanderbilt. So this was definitely a, a major concern that we were watching. Would Vanderbilt score? Turns out, no. Uh, I, I think Georgia kind of running it up there, scoring 21 points in the fourth quarter. That's unnecessary, and, and it's disappointing. But, but it, at this point, when it comes to Georgia, when it comes to that whole charade, it's what we expect, and that's exactly what happened. They kind of run up their stats, things like that. And, guys, Georgia, I don't know who needs to hear this again. Georgia is not going to do anything this year. Okay, guys, they're not winning the title. They're not making the national championship. We've got to stop with this Georgia obsession. They decide to blow out Vanderbilt and run up the score. There's, It's unnecessary. It really is. And I, I feel really bad for Vanderbilt University. And I think Vanderbilt, you know, needs to be... Uh, Needs needs to be uh, compensated for this ridiculousness by the University of Georgia. It's just completely unnecessary. This is an academic institution, and you're going to run up the score and and score 21 points in the fourth quarter because you're desperate because you can't you can't beat Penn State by 20 points four weeks ago. How about the game against Missouri? Right? It's just it's unbelievable. And now, guys, we get onto the absolute war of the worlds. Tennessee over Alabama. There were some crazy calls in this game. Alabama had crazy penalty yards, but revealing everything. We've got two teams that were separated by two total yards. I believe Alabama had 569 yards of total offense. Tennessee had 567. Tennessee's offense way more efficient than Alabama's offense. Bryce Young, really good, just not good enough. Several different huge calls. There was one call that was a complete bailout for Alabama on a third and goal from the 16-yard line. They called a pass interference in the end zone when Bryce Young just chucks it up. I thought that was ridiculous. Tennessee ends up making like a 40-yard field goal to win it at the end. Otherwise, this thing would have went to overtime. Crazy game. And guys, let me say right now, I, I think they're going to rank Ohio State number one. Georgia number two, Tennessee number three, Michigan number four, Clemson number five. That's what I think they're going to do. That's my prediction. That's what I would do. And, and guys, by the way, did you see that win that Stanford had over Notre Dame? What a program Stanford is. Let me tell you something, guys. Let me just say this. If I had an AP vote as a college football expert, and you can see many people, I mean, in the comments, they say, listen, you're an expert. You know everything. I'm a college football expert. I'm sitting here saying... I would legitimately rank two and five Stanford. I'd probably rank them like 24th or something. Um, they're just a good program. They're, they're impressive. David Shaw is unbelievable. David Shaw and Chip Kelly, who knew? The two best coaches in college football. Unbelievable. It's so inspiring. Next, we've got TCU. Unbelievable comeback over Oklahoma State. You really, Oklahoma State, this is a game at the end of the season when you don't make a New Year Six Bowl. You're like, that's the that's why. That is why. Oklahoma State controlled this game. They were up by two touchdowns throughout most of it. And they freaking blow it in double overtime. TCU did outgain Oklahoma State. But overall, Oklahoma State let this one get away on the road. TCU stays undefeated. I still think they're going to lose three regular season games. But we have to respect them. They're going to be moving up probably right around number 10, I would say. That's another huge win for TCU, considering Oklahoma State was inside the top 10. They're going to move outside now. The next game, we have Syracuse beating NC State 24-9. So it, it seems like NC State's season ended today. Before the game, we're seeing Devin Larry is questionable. Is he going to play? Is he not? Turns out he's out for the year. 
So that's a college injury, and that's how college injuries work. We just don't know. Um, but overall, I would say that Syracuse, great win. I, they've got a very tough game next week on the road, a noon game at Clemson. That's the ABC game, I think. I think they lose that game, at least right now I do. But still, that's a great win for Syracuse. It was aided by the injury to the quarterback, their backup quarterback playing. NC State could just get nothing going. But Syracuse, they sold out the Carrier Dome. Good for them. They're still undefeated. They're going to be inside probably the top 15. So they're having a great year. Congratulations to them. Guys, did I not call this one? I said James Madison was a one and done. I said they were going to lose outright as a 12-point favorite in my predictions video. That's exactly what happens in an absolute shootout. Just like I called Georgia Southern beats James Madison. You got to feel bad for James Madison, but I warned people. I said this Georgia Southern team can score. They're going to be motivated. They're facing a ranked team. That's exactly what happened. I still think James Madison probably finishes maybe 10-2 and two, uh, on the year, but they do lose that one. Next, we've got Kentucky. There's another game that I called Kentucky beating Mississippi State completely grounding the air raid offense and Will Rogers major win for Kentucky. Mississippi State faces Alabama in Tuscaloosa next week. Good luck with that. Uh, so they're probably going to have back-to-back -back losses and they will be unranked. Kentucky really uses their defense, uses their running game. Chris Rodriguez, of course, back. Um, he had a major game in that one. So those games there. Next, we have Clemson and Florida State. Right now, looks like Clemson should finish this game out. They're up 34-28. to So that game got close. But I do have to give credit to Clemson. I did pick FSU to win in, a, in an upset, and they basically completely silenced me. I'll give them credit for that. They did. Clemson is, is a good football team. I'm still not completely bought into them, and I am moving them down one spot to number five because I think Michigan showed a lot. Um, but Clemson, is, and that game is now over. So that game's done, 34-28. to 28. Clemson covers the four-and-a-half-point spread uh, there at the end, and that was a game they controlled. They were up 34-13, to 13. so the context to that game is really Florida State scoring two garbage-time touchdowns, and we've got a game going on right now. We've got USC up by seven over Utah. I think Utah is going to come back and win that game. Uh, I stand by that prediction completely. I've got full faith in that. Um, but I believe that is it for the overall matchups. Yes, yeah, so that is going to do it. Uh, the major stuff, Tennessee breaks through as a program, gets the huge win at home, plays Alabama basically completely even, uh, and, and really unbelievable game. Alabama, it looked like they had an interception. Pass interference gets called. That was like six games within one game. I mean, that was a marathon, four-hour type thing. It went from 3.30 to 7.30. It was an event. That's exactly what you want when it comes to college football. That's why Big Noon is such a sham. It's so disgusting. If that game gets played at noon, there's no way it's that good. You can't tell me any different. And now we have to deal with Big Noon ruining Michigan football, ruining Ohio State football, ruining Penn State football. It is disgusting. Big Noon is just horrible for college football. It's killing the Big Ten. And guys, again, I mean, there were some other great performances. Watching that Stanford-Notre Dame game, just unbelievable football. And we've got the huge game next week, and, and we all hope and we pray. Guys, next week I'm predicting Chip Kelly is going to go back into Eugene, Oregon and do something so inspiring. I mean, it's going to be the most inspiring thing we've seen in the United States of America since the MLK speech, the I Had a Dream speech. That's, it's, I mean, I'm just getting terrible. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. I cannot wait for what Chip Kelly... Chip Kelly is going to save college football next week when UCLA goes into Oregon and actually saves Oregon football by beating them and removes the disgusting backdrop of Georgia football controlling Oregon. Once Oregon loses, they will be cleansed. And Chip Kelly is there to help them. We're trying to help Oregon. All Oregon has to do is lose. That's it. And they're saved. That's all they have to do. Guys, this is real. This is happening. Uh, and this is a major game next week. So we've actually got 
Utah with a first and nobody cares. This game's over by the time this is uploaded. But Utah does have first and goal. Guys, I'm saying this right now. I'll just I'll be honest. Utah's gonna win this game. We've got it right here. It's they're losing, but I'm telling you, actually, we're gonna do this. They're gonna win this game. That's how smart I am, guys. I can see stuff. That's why it's all I predict all these upsets. Second and goal from the one. The Georgia Southern upset. The Mississippi State upset. You know, I predicted the FSU one. We're not going to talk about it. But, you know, all these games. And, guys, again, I stand by it. You know, I know Stanford might be 2-5. and five. You know, I'm a college football expert. People, they know I'm one of the best in the country. They trust me. And, guys, let me tell you, I, dug, I dig into all this stuff. I know. I look beyond the box store. And I'm like, listen, there's not 24 teams that are better than this Stanford football team. I know they're 2-5. and five. It doesn't really matter. It's like last year when Nebraska was 3-9, and nine, I had them inside my top 20. And that was smart. That was smart. That was a whole different thing because they kept losing one-score games. But, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.